My name is Dr. Rolando Toyos of Toyos Clinic, and I'm a board-certified ophthalmologist who has devoted the last 10 years to developing treatments for dry eye. We made a discovery eight years ago that intense pulse light held the key to relieving many patients of their debilitating signs and symptoms. With research grants, investigation, patients, and the development of advanced technology by Dermamed, we perfected the optimum dry eye treatment. We have had patients from all over the world come to our clinic to receive the treatment and finally get relief. I answer dozens of emails every day about dry eye and how we treat this disease. Yeah, what intense pulse light is, it's not a laser. A lot of people confuse it for a laser. It's actually just a flash lamp of light that goes from the infrared all the way to the ultraviolet uh, in the light spectrum. And what you do is you put a special filter so you only allow the light that you want to filter through and come out. Uh, so if you've seen, it's really a big flash uh, of light. But in that big flash, there's pulses of light. So even though the naked eye only sees a pulse of light, it's actually pulsing on and off. So you can go pulse 20 milliseconds on and 25 milliseconds off, or 200 milliseconds on and, and the rest off. And uh, with that filter, what we're trying to do is just get light intensity that will be recognized by blood cells and once recognized by blood cells, it'll close off those blood vessels. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what gets rid of those telangiectasias around uh, the lid and around the skin. And what we find is uh, at a wavelength of 500 to 700 nanometers, mm -hmm. that that is uh, acutely recognized by blood cells. Mm -hmm. The other thing, though, is that it's also recognized by pigment of the skin. So I'm asked all the time who can get intense pulse light mm -hmm. and who can't. Mm -hmm. So basically, patients my skin color and darker mm -hmm. can't get intense pulse light because the pigment in my skin uh, recognizes that light and could make my skin lighter. But anybody lighter than myself and, and below, and there's a whole scale called the Fitzpatrick scale that goes from one to six, so I would be considered a dark four, okay. and then darker than me would be five, and then the darkest skin color being six, mm -hmm. and then uh, the lightest skin color being one. So anybody, so you would be a one, and one to three can definitely get intense pulse light, and then four, uh, it would just depend, and you would have to do kind of a test spot just to see if it would lighten their skin or not. But when they get intense pulse light, what it'll do is it'll close off those blood vessels that are secreting inflammatory mediators, mm -hmm. uh, allowing the gland to work normally without all the inflammation going on in the gland itself. If you've got inflammation around the gland, now the gland can't work normally, and the secretion you get is a thick toothpaste-like secretion. Right. You do the IPL, you close off the blood vessels that are secreting inflammatory mediators, now the gland uh, is free from inflammation and now it can produce normal, healthy uh, oil. So intense pulse light isn't a just one and done treatment. You can't just do one and then it close off all the blood vessels. Right. Uh, with a series of treatments, little by little, more and more blood vessels are closed off. The question I get all the time is, why are you treating from ear? to mm -hmm. ear and the reason being is that uh, we found if you just treat just right on the lid mm -hmm. that uh, the blood vessels are being fed by other blood vessels around the face okay. so if you just treat the lid then those blood vessels will come back much sooner okay. so that's why we treat from ear to ear and it makes the the um, uh, whole closing off of blood vessels last longer and new vessels don't come in to uh, for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. So we started to make this correlation with uh, intense pulse light and helping okay. meibomian gland dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So in 2004 we applied for a, a grant from the American Society of Cataract 
uh, refractive surgery mm -hmm. uh, to study this relationship between intense pulse light and dry eye. So we did uh, two years of, of studying, mm -hmm. uh, taking patients who were the worst of the worst, uh, meibomian gland dysfunction, dry eye patients. They didn't necessarily have to have rosacea. And we treated one side of the face with intense pulse light and we treated, and we didn't treat the other side. Okay. Uh, we had 100 patients, nine of the patients dropped out because their skin looked so good on one side and not mm -hmm. so good on the other. Mm -hmm. But in uh, those patients we found that we had an increase in tear breakup time uh, at every time point uh, with the intense pulse light side as, a, as opposed to the side that didn't get intense pulse light. Mm -hmm. And then when you looked at the lid margins and the patients that got IPL and the patients that didn't, uh, the patients that did get intense pulse light, IPL, uh, their lids looked better and their glands, uh, instead of secreting a toothpaste-like secretion, mm -hmm. were secreting a thinner, better uh, mybum, a better fatty layer. Mm -hmm. uh, and all the patients thought that their symptoms had improved on the side that got the intense pulse light. Now part of that might be placebo effect, but when you couple that with the tear breakup time mm -hmm. improving mm -hmm. and you couple that with their lids looking better, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we made that connection. So the natural uh, physician to do this is an ophthalmologist because they, one, uh, can perform surgery, have experience with lasers like uh, and other type of new technology uh, like LASIK and things of that nature. So they're used to operating high technology products that if you're not using them correctly can cause harm. Okay. Uh, where they're not experienced in is this piece of technology because they've never used intense pulse light before. So that's why we do the certification courses to get them comfortable and that's why I waited until the technology was uh, foolproof. Now what I've told all the doctors is that this should be something that an MD does uh, and not an anesthetist or your assistant. Mm -hmm. So I do all the work uh, myself and I tell all the doctors that are getting certified to do all the work themselves.